Florence Pa should sponsor Abby. <laughs> I wish. Oh my God. <laughs> so we have attendees. Hello to everybody. Uh, anybody out there already? And all right. This is my first interview. Hello, thank you for being my first. Oh, this is such an honor for me. Oh my god. Like it's witness history. And I don't like people from the Philippines who are like talking about it too. Every time I tell them, oh, I'm interviewing her. Oh, oh. they're like, oh yeah, I saw the book. Um, so I'm, I'm they're excited <laughs> for sure. I'm so happy to hear that. I, I really <laughs> wish I could go like and, and see everyone there. I'm from California originally, but I'm always like, ah, like it's so cool to do something, even though I'm in New York right now currently. <laughs> Um, so I love this like Zoom situation. So thank you for hosting again. You're welcome. Greetings from Reno and a Berlin game. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. Like San Jose. Hello, fellow San Jose. Hey. That's where Abby came from too, or <laughs> lived for <laughs> a little bit. Um. Wow. Long. Oh, I love that that brand too. <laughs> I know I will yes. talk about it more, but once everyone gets in. <laughs> Hello, Monterey Park. Hi. Um, you know, welcome everyone and thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Dex Sampson and I'm a library assistant at the Foster City Library. Um, I'm excited to welcome you tonight for our cook along with uh, Abby Balingit, author of Mayumu. Filipino American desserts remixed. So before we begin, I want to let you know that later this month on Thursday, September 28th at 6.30 p.m. San Mateo County Libraries will welcome Earlone Woods and Nigel Poor, authors of This Is Ear Hustle, a book about the celebrated podcast they originally created and produced out of San Quentin State Prison. We hope you will join us for their talk. As for tonight's logistics, your microphone and video will be turned off. But please feel free to use the chat and submit your questions in the Zoom Q&A. For those who'd like to access live closed captions for this event, click on CC, then show subtitles. And now, San Mateo County Libraries is thrilled to introduce Abby Balingit. Abby Balingit is a Filipino-American home baker and author based in Brooklyn. Her debut cookbook, Mayumo, Filipino-American Desserts Remix, was released on February 28, 2023. When she's not working full-time at a live music company, she is running a baking blog called the Dusky Kitchen. Her hashtag Pasalubong treat box series helps to raise money for mutual aid organizations. She has been featured in Bon Appetit, Food and Wine, Eater, Thrillist, Food 52, and more. You can also follow her at uh, Instagram.com slash The Dusky Kitchen or Twitter.com The Dusky Kitchen, which is X now, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah check out the instagram they are beautiful just say <laughs> okay abby um you can are you gonna start anytime soon <laughs> okay i'll start hello, <laughs> yes. um, hello everyone thank you so much for joining me we're making as you know hopefully uh the common sea poppy seed muffins and with like a tangy glaze a occult glaze um and so there's a lot going, well, not a lot going on. There's more so I already kind of like pre-measured everything. So I hope it's not too fast for everyone. Um, but I am going to go ahead and start with our dry ingredients. I already preheated the oven to 425 degrees. So that has already happened. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and start whisking everything in this very large bowl so that you can't very much see. But um, here we have three cups of flour. Okay. And this is all purpose flour. Um, and then I also have poppy seeds in here. I just like green, like painter's tape, marked all this. Um, baking soda, half teaspoon, kosher salt, a half teaspoon, and also baking powder, whole tablespoon. Okay, so we're all just gonna 
do this and it's meant to be really quick um we're just gonna like add all these dry ingredients here so this is granulated sugar one cup and I kind of love these kinds of um like quick bake slash like cakes that are like one bowl situations where you don't have to like bring out the stand mixer and honestly like a reason why I kind of like chose this recipe for all of us to do is because I knew that we could all get it done without like heavy duty equipment um so yeah the main goal here when you're whisking um you can whisk very fiercely now because once you add liquids that's when you have to be a little careful and gentle with the batter um but what we're doing is making sure that the baking powder and baking soda is all even distributed into this mixture. Um, so we have everything in here. And then we kind of make a little well, which I'm like, it's so hard to like show you because I'm just one lady. Um, but I'm creating a little divot inside um, just for all our wet ingredients to live in. Um, I'm also just going to go ahead and start with this is pre measured one and three fourths cup buttermilk. Also, Deck, if there are any questions right now in the chat. Yeah, yeah, totally. The very first question I saw was, what was on your, uh, what's on your phone case? Or what oh, was phone case? <laughs> I was zooming in on him, but he's, um, he's a little clown. Oh, okay. <laughs> Joker. <laughs> okay. Joker. Um, and then somebody, there's a fellow, um, uh, food blogger and, uh, podcast host here. Chef Ava Marie. Oh, hello. Hi, uh, Chef. Happy Hour podcast on YouTube. Um, <laughs> one question is, um, if they can have the muffin recipe for half the muffins, um, can they do that? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, then you would only, you probably yield only three. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, that's definitely totally possible with this recipe. So, um, just a clarification. It's a one cup of sugar yeah so one yeah. cup of really sugar for now and then okay. so the recipe is kind of divided so there's another three-fourths cup coming soon um so once we put all the muffins in the oven we can go get started on like the calamansi syrup um and i guess this is a good break because i did some other things at this moment um but i basically have like two eggs so difficult but yeah two eggs and i'm gonna lightly whisk it before okay. we go ahead and put it in the overall batter. So you just want to do that just because this is such a big mass of things of food that it is really hard if you end up having like a loose egg white or egg yolk that's just like not fully immersed or mixed into the whole thing. Um, and we also have vegetable oil um, and vanilla extract. Here we have one fourth cup and one mm -hmm. teaspoon. And I just mix these together for ease. And I have to run to my microwave and that is so close that my kitchen is so small. So one second. Sure, no problem. I'm right here. Um, this I just use the microwave to melt the stick of butter. So it's unsalted butter. Uh -huh. um, and so we're just gonna go ahead and add it to this mixture. And it's kind of lightly cooled. So you just wanna be sure that it's not so, so hot uh, okay. because we cook the eggs, which is not good. We don't want scrambled eggs in the muffins. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I think the last ingredient for this um, is just like the zest of one lime. And this is a recipe was honestly adapted because I love the flavor of calamansi, which we will see get come into play later. Um, but I really can't find it here in New York, unfortunately. I feel like in California, like everyone's titas, yeah. like a calamansi tree in their backyard. Um, I have one. <laughs> you, oh my gosh, like, I'm so jealous. I'm so, <laughs> so, so, I really just like the citrus, like fresh citrus flavor. Um, and so that's why there's a little bit of zest from just this lime to kind of mimic some like mm -hmm. this freshness of this citrus family. Okay. So um, I just uh, have to ask again, because this uh, um, one of the pan, uh, one of the participants or the attendees is asking, um, after the flour, what was it again that you, uh, that they have to do? Oh yeah, after the flour and the rest of the dry ingredients, you're gonna create like a tiny well um, in the middle of your kind of like all your dry ingredients. So you can kind of have, I'm gonna bring this over so you can kind of see it. There's just like a light, it's kind of 
you know, there's now stuff in it, but like it helps um, just have all your liquid ingredients mm -hmm. in one like central place. So it'll be kind of hopefully easier once you're, once we finally get all the zest in, we can actually start mixing the batter. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, this is probably gonna be like hyper speed mode because I did redo so many things. So please feel free to like ask questions as like, I know I'm like maybe slightly a step ahead or something if you're still measuring your ingredients. Okay, dang, there, there's other questions here too. Let me just scroll up. There's a lot of questions. Um, so right now, let's see. Okay, so, oh, this is one we were talking about earlier. So for those new to Filipino cooking, what are the must-haves in your pantry? That's the question that I'm like, oh, yes, I will ask this because um, the book has the, the pantry essentials, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I see you have marca piña, soy sauce, you have rufina patis, or the fish sauce. These are things that I grew up with. And yeah. I was like, uh, are these handed out to or passed down to you by your mom? Or is this the, the did you taste test every uh, brand <laughs> you can find? Oh, you know, I feel like a lot of the brands that I just put into the book are like the ones that I grew up with. So honestly, it is very much dictated by what my parents would get at the store. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think that some things like ube extract, um, pandan yeah. leaves, like fresh banana, like fresh pandan that's frozen, I guess frozen, that is basically it does make a difference versus using the extract. Um, all these things, like I loved going to like Seafood City with my parents when I was still living in California and going to like mom and pop like grocery stores that are Filipino specific. Um, but there's a lot more hopefully like overlap lately with like other Southeast Asian grocery stores. So if you don't have a Filipino grocery store in your area, um, it is a, there is some ways like first going online, but also kind of checking out what else is available out there. Um, so I love that sometimes I'll go to like a store, like any like Asian store and they'll be like, oh, lychee juice and lychee extract. Of course, like we would have it, you know, that's so synonymous, I think, with not just Filipino um, produce, but like yeah. East Asia overall. Yeah, I know. Like um, some of the ingredients that I need for my own um, meals, I have to like look for it either a Vietnamese version mm -hmm. or a, a Thai version. Um, but the Bay Area has a lot of uh, stores. There's Ranch 99. There is um, Pacific Supermarket. Most of these items are there. And of course, as, as Abby mentioned, Seafood City in Milpitas mm -hmm. in South San Francisco. Uh, for sure, they have all this this brands on in, in Abby's book. Um, so another question: Did you add all the sugar or only some at the beginning? Oh yes, yeah, I think I should at the beginning, and then the three quarters cup will come later into the syrup. Um, and I'm so I'm also multitasking low key. Um, but I'm just mixing everything now that all my wet ingredients are in. Um. Mm -hmm. And I think someone just said the oven baking. Okay, the oven baking temperature right now is at 425 degrees. Um, and I guess the one note, once y'all are ready to start like whisking and mixing all your ingredients for the batter is that, you know, like go slow. Um, also like make sure, like there's hopefully like not many like flour streaks remaining by the time that you're done mixing. Um, and sometimes it's very helpful. I have a rubber spatula with me um, to kind of scrape the sides and the bottoms because that's usually where you can kind of miss some flour. Mm. And um, the only other thing that I might narrate first before I'm actually doing it is lining the baking pan. So I have a, a note in the book that's like alternate like three uh, for I know it's like a six cup tin that I have the jumbo tin. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't want to put them all together in just one because they're going to be pretty big when they bake up. And so if you only have them all sticking, they're going to all stick together by the time they're baked because the tops kind of get domed um, and very uh, too big for at least like this uh, only one tin. So two tins is ideal. Okay. All right. Sorry, this is getting late. Somebody asked if the buttermilk is not at room what if the buttermilk is not at room temp? 
you know, it's, I think, okay, sometimes it has happened to me and I'm very impatient and then I, it's not really at room temp. It should be okay. Like as you know, it's only, uh, the only bad thing is if something is hot and then so if your butter is at a really different temperature than that, it could cause the batter to curdle. But honestly, mm -hmm. what like cold buttermilk is usually fine. That's that's oh. usually fine. Um, what is the oven baking temperature again? Uh, 425 degrees. 425. Okay, and another question. Can I substitute lemon juice for the calamansi sea juice? Yeah, that's a totally good substitution. Um, you can also use lime. So any other kind of like tart citrus is really good for the syrup. Okay, um, and then um, yogurt for Yakult? Oh yeah, that's a perfect substitution. I know like Yakult can be kind of a niche thing to also get at the grocery store. Um, but if it's like the Japanese probiotic drink, that's a really fun like childhood favorite of mine. Um, okay, I know this is one other step ahead. I'm like okay. kind of proud just so you can see everything um but I have my muffin tins like all lined and this is what I mean by alternating where it's kind of like uh one two a uh, one on one row another two like as long as they're all not all next to each other is ideal um so we're gonna go ahead and put nearly like a cup of uh batter per well of your muffin tin um I have this I love a uh, measuring scoop like this cookie scoops this one is like a quarter cup and so I usually just kind of like do you know a, a nice four of these per thing I just love like not having to I hate the thing of like you know when you put like your spoon in the measuring cup and then you have to like scrape it out that is like my least favorite <laughs> kind of thing about measuring things like that um so I'm just gonna do that but please feel free again to ask questions since I'm kind of blazing ahead um did you already put the frozen calamansi no, so actually that's the next step once that's you next step. Okay. uh the muffins into the oven um, so the whole thing is that the calamansi is in the syrup that gets kind of, uh, that's the muffins get soaked in that syrup after they're done baking. All right. Um, I do have some questions that not baking related oh, here. Okay. Um, so what, one question is, uh, what made you decide to develop ube inspired desserts for the book? Oh, you know, I feel like I couldn't not put any ube desserts in the book. Right. It's yeah, it's so important to like Filipino culture, especially like popular culture mainstream. I know like ube has really broken into the mainstream, um, but I definitely wanted to highlight, you know, like there's so much of ube so mysterious because in the States, like we get so much of it exported in different forms, like extracts and like the frozen and the powdered versions. And so I think I was like in my 20s again when I first saw like ube and it's like natural like <laughs> form. Right. Um, but it's a very precious like ingredient and I think it's really nice to be able to kind of use it in different ways, especially uh, in the recipes in the book. I mean, I grew up with ube and grinding it by hand. Oh my God. <laughs> but that's the best part after you ground it, like, you know, mm -hmm. um, tastes so good. Um, I loved reading your book and I'm so excited to try your recipe. Also, my sister is starting at Cal in the spring. What is the one thing that should be at the top of her UCB bucket list? Oh my gosh, there's so many things. First of all, go Bears. And I had so much fun when I was in Berkeley. Um, I feel like the food is incredible. So I feel like hopefully she can take some time and go to the north side of campus, go to Cheese Board, get the pizza with the green sauce, whatever pizza of the day is usually really good. Um, and yeah, I feel like it's just such, it's such a beautiful place. And so I hope that they have a great time at their, during their time at Cal, cause I did. Um, and I met like the best people in my, like in my life because of going to Berkeley. So congratulations to them. Thank you for that question. Do you ever do live culinary in-person cooking demos? Um, I have done only for the book, honestly. Uh -huh. like I did like an adobo chocolate chip cookie one for James Beard. Um, and then one at the embassy for Machu Pastillas, um, the Philippine embassy in DC. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like it does, it's not as frequent as I'd like but it's really fun to do it in person and this too is really fun um because it really is kind of like it's it's a dual thing right of like oh how well do I know my own recipes but also like it's so good to like learn more about y'all through the questions that you're asking and I wish it was more of like I could see your faces and it was like you know easier to do that but for the sake of time I totally understand 
Okay. Somebody's like saying that they they are best friends with the owner of Seven Mile, just in case you're interested. Ooh, <laughs> doing oh my gosh. That. But uh, we'll do that later. Okay. <laughs> so uh, another question is, can you use bottled calamansi juice instead of the frozen one? Uh, um, and so if so, would it still be the same measurement? Yeah, be, right? I feel like um, for, so I would just double check what, if there's added sugar to that calamansi, uh, the bottled version. Um, and if there is, I would probably just like taste it and maybe like lessen the amount of sugar that I originally have in the recipe. So that's like in my recipe, because it's pure calamansi, just the juice alone, I just use like three fourths cup of sugar. And so maybe just like double check to see because sometimes I'll accidentally maybe get like if I don't read the label it'll be like frozen concentrate I'm like oh that's like added sugar so you don't want it to be too sweet and so I think it'll be like a play by ear and taste kind of thing of how much sugar you should add based on the bottled commons. Okay. Could you um, explain a little bit more why two muffin trays in alternating baking containers? Yeah yeah so um, the thing with the I guess this will also go into kind of why the ovens at a very high temperature. Um, so when I created this recipe, I just like really wanted like big Costco size muffins and like bakery size muffins are kind of like big, big domes. And so since you fill your like baking, like uh, your wells so high, um, they're meant to be very like voluminous kind of muffin tops. And so the thing is you don't want them all sitting next to each other because then that top will run into the other one and then you'll have like conjoined twins or conjoined sextuplets, I guess, on like one tray. And that's why you have to kind of alternate it to give each of them space to spread. Um, and so I, I'm blazing ahead again. So I'm gonna put these in the oven at 425 for seven minutes. And it's specifically only for seven minutes because we're gonna adjust the oven temperature to 350 degrees. And we do that because um, first of all, like steam helps make that rise really high for these types of like for any quick breads or like muffins or cakes. This is kind of like the reason why you do that is so you get that puff of steam and you have a little bit of that structure, but then you don't wanna bake the whole time at 425 because then you run the risk of the tops burning, of it not being cooked completely through. And so that's why you lower it to 350 without opening the oven, just like cancel or turn off your oven and turn it back on to 350. Um, and I'll let you know once the seven minutes are up, it's about 17 to 20 more minutes in the oven, um, just so that it can fully bake and we'll get to that step. But let me put these in the oven quickly. <laughs> Okay, this is <laughs> somebody said, Help, I accidentally put the calamansi juice in the batter already. Can I still salvage this? <laughs> um, we'll do our best. I have no promises. I'm so sorry. That really does happen sometimes if you're like, not, I happens to the best of us. So let me know how it actually turns out so I can also see if that can work in the recipe. Um, the acid might throw off the chemistry in the bake, but just keep me posted. I'm sorry. So uh, email me, um, LV, and then I will email it to, uh, or you can just uh, direct message her on Instagram, which is at Dusky Kitchen um, yes. Instagram. <laughs> At the Dusky Kitchen, I am happy to answer DMs, and I'm also taking y'all with me so we can get to the column C syrup part. Uh, speaking of column C, I'm going to put this on. I just this is so not like official. I just have like stacks of like books to kind of prop up my laptop. <laughs> but here, I'm going to put it on top of a candle. Oh my gosh, I also did that added the just, oh no. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, everyone. That is not the intention, unfortunately. Um, let me go ahead and, so sorry to everyone who already put their common sea juice into their bake already, but this is, I bought it and this is what it kind of, it's, this lighting is not doing any favors, but it is kind of like a nice dark yellow, almost orange um, after thawing. I use the frozen version. Um, that is this one right here. I just wanted to take it out so that y'all know the brand that I use, not sponsored, just like the one that my trusty Manila Gold uh, Pure Calm and Seed Juice. So this is six fluid ounces frozen. So what <laughs> Somebody said, 
uh, their laptop is also on a stack of books at the moment. Uh, I know. Oh my God, real twins. Um, for those people who have been asking for the recipe itself, hey, borrow the book from the library and it's uh, on page 199. Jumbo calamansi poppy seed muffins with a tangy glaze. That, it's Ray, right? <laughs> Am I correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. There you go. Um... Let me see. There is more questions. Um, somebody asked, have you have you ever made suman or putu bongbong? I know Ooh. putu bongbong is so hard to make because oh, of the, uh, I've never made putu bongbong. I'm so sorry, but I have made suman before. Um, and there's also a suman recipe in the book, a suman maron, um, mm-hmm. which is from uh, Visayas. And it's like, chocolate and and also more mine has like actual oreos into the actual uh sticky rice um but i i love suman i think it's the original like the one that i had a lot when it's like my parents are here they always bring the one that is like just very basic with like the sticky rice and then you put added sugar coconut on top after unraveling it um but puto bumbong for anyone who doesn't know what that is it's a uh, Kind of like a Christmas specialty, but it's basically purple sticky rice um, that's like soaked and then browned and then like uh, put into bamboo tubes, yeah. and then they are steamed. And so like you re- release it from the tube, and then you add like sugar and coconut all the stuff that I'm talking about before. But it's very involved because I do not have bamboo tubes. I don't have yeah. a system for it. I don't know if you made it deck at all when you were in the no. Village. I just line up every Christmas, <laughs> like what? September from September. You know, oh, Filipinos yeah. spend a Christmas or celebrate Christmas from September to January 30th. <laughs> yes, it's so true, actually. Oh my God, let me see. So I'm sorry, right now you cannot see because I am, I'm trying to put this down a bit more. Now you can't really, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're just going to like lift the laptop up. But this is the common seed juice and three-fourths cup of the granulated sugar. And I'm just like waiting for it to kind of one, bring it to a boil and then two, kind of cook it additionally in a couple, like three to four minutes longer. Um, so you want all the sugar to dissolve. You don't want like a gritty syrup. Um, and so I'll let you know when there's an update back because I, okay. I can't hold my laptop for that long. <laughs> uh, somebody, because uh, the Christmas talk, right? Any Filipino uh, Hanukkah fusion recipes in the future? Oh my gosh, you know, actually, there is one in the book, um, kind of, I would say, I don't know if this is a Hanukkah specific thing, but it is Jewish, there is like, one, um, like, there's rugula, that's what he uses curly top chocolate, uh, which is like a Filipino brand of chocolates that I really like in the book. Um, There's also, uh, what's it called? There's also uh, black and white cookies, which I guess is more like New York Jewish deli, like every day. (laughs) This is like, sorry, this is actually not very Hanukkah-y, but there are some like Filipino Jewish like mashups in the book where that one, specifically the black and white cookie is more of a Filipino flag, red, uh, blue, yellow, white uh, colors. And the flavor is more like jasmine into the icing, uh, which is kind of like uh, Sampagita is like the national like flower of like the Philippines. And so I wanted that flavor, it being in like the jasmine family to kind of be in the cookie itself. So thank you for the question. I will keep thinking about more Hanukkah specific recipes in the future. <laughs> she, or she, um, Jillian, who asked that question, said that she'll take it. Thank you. Thank okay. you. And then to Chess, who asked about the suman and putu bongbong, I just wanted to let you know that in the book, she, um, Abby also has a latik, uh, mm-hmm. recipe, page thirty. And that is the best combination with suman. For me, I grew up with that. Oh, I, love I highly recommend that. Yes. Dip it, like, sauce it all over. Latik. Yes. Yes. Toasted coconut curds. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other questions I'm, like, trying to... Um, can I... Sub- okay, I've ad- you've answered that. Uh what was your first dish that you created in your career and was it a pinoy dish oh i feel like career is funny because i think that like 
maybe I started like baking when I was like 13. <laughs> so I was very young. So I unfortunately, I will say it probably wasn't actually like my own like a Filipino dish. But the, the first memory I have in the kitchen was like helping my mom um, with uh, Maha Blanca and like stirring the pot for her. So that's like the Filipino coconut milk uh, corn pudding. Um, and she would kind of cheat. So usually traditionally use latik on top to, you know, has a, have as a topping and garnish. Um, but we would just like use like the Sweden coconut flakes and then just like toast it over the sauce pan. Sorry, my seven minutes are up, but then it's also it tastes really good to you. Um, I'm going to change the temperature of the oven. Once you're done with those seven minutes, we're gonna go ahead and lower it down to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna put my timer on for that. So just in case everyone has things in the oven. Okay. So currently you are um, doing the, the glaze, right? The calamansi glaze? The syrup, yeah, the, the syrup. syrup, syrup, yeah. sorry. And, no, no, no worries. <laughs> and uh, somebody was asking what, what's happening now. Um, happening it, now. it is right. kind of hard to like read and uh, watch and do it at the same time. I understand. No, um, I'm, I feel that. I want to show you more. Like it's finally reached a, pretty much like a, a boil. So I'm going to just let it cook for another two to like three minutes. I said three to five in the book, but this has kind of been going on a little longer than I just showed y'all. But um, it's pretty much now like going to thicken a little bit as you, oh my God, I'm sorry. All this is such a twisted angle, but it's going to thicken a little bit um, and reduce a little bit as you're doing this. Um, but you just want to make sure again, like the goal is for the sugar to be completely melted and combined into the liquid. So here we go. How is everyone doing? I hope okay. This is calamansi juice and three fourths cup granulated sugar in this pot. Six fluid ounces of calamansi juice to be exact. Hey. I somebody I have a read a podcaster. She said, "Me too. I started cooking at the age thirteen. My first recipe was pizza jalapeno sauce with fresh chopped jalapeno and canned diced tomatoes. And I oh. knew I had a gift for cooking, and that's my culinary story. How about that's you, Abby? What's your culinary culinary story, and how did you get to write this book? Oh, you know, I was never like." Um, professionally trained or like went to culinary school I kind of learned how to bake from reading baking blogs um, also watching Food Network watching YouTube videos I'm very much a self-taught baker and for cooking it's funny because like a lot of people like if you knew me maybe like six years ago like they'd be like Abby never cooks what do you mean <laughs> but like I kind of like over time like college was kind of like a area of time where I was like ramen every day, pizza every day, um, you know, exaggeration, but like it was, it wasn't the best. Like I wasn't cooking as much as I do now as like a fully fledged adult, I think. Um, and so my parents like living in California, I live in New York, they're kind of long distance for me. So when I wanted to make Filipino specific dishes, which is honestly like, I, I think I made like Filipino spaghetti was probably the first thing I made in New York in like 2017 or something. Um, and I was like, how much banana ketchup do you want? <laughs> or like, I just FaceTime them and be like, can, can you tell me if this looks right? Um, so that's kind of like how I learned how to make a lot of Filipino stuff. I was honestly like online blogs are really helpful in cookbooks as well. All right. Ten. Um, any other look. question? Her oh, so somebody was asking why, <laughs> why you were hunched over. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I know I, this is more just because like, I'm like at a weird part of the kitchen where this is just like the syrup stage. So there is really no no good place to put it. I'm like, <laughs> so I'm just like ha having it, cradling it as like a baby. Um, but actually, this stuff is pretty much done. The syrup is finished. I just want to show you the lighting. Is OK, I'm going to bring this over. I am bringing it closer to the camera. It's kind of hard because my pan is dark bottom but the syrup is done I just turned it off um and now we can go back to like regular lighting and regular staging um but my thing is that I actually baked a batch of the muffins earlier and so this is another reason why I'm like going way faster um so I'm going to show y'all what the oven should or what the muffin should look like once you're done baking them um give me one second I'm going to take the dirty dishes away 
Clean as you go, right? As you've oh said God. on the book. <laughs> Oh my gosh, here we go. Okay, so we have these baked muffins. Um, you can see that they're quite hefty. Okay, this one is this one as well. So this is kind of the thing I was talking about where this corner or this edge of this one muffin kind of is falling over already. Oh my god, I, I'm bad at aiming the camera. But anyways, like it's it's overflowing over the like where it's the the well of it is. So you can kind of see. This muffin is kind of big um, and the thing that we're going to do is kind of poke holes um, into these muffins um, so we can put the syrup into it and let it soak in um, and the ideal thing once your muffins are in theory done the ones that you're live baking right now um, is that they should have like when a toothpick goes into the center it should come out clean um, and that's when you know like usually cakes muffins are done um, and so it's also a little bit lightly browned on the edges, which is really good. So I'm going to do the honors of just stabbing these muffins very quickly. I know you can't see it very well. We're going low. Okay. So we're literally just doing, I think, honestly, like, I forget what I exactly say, but maybe eight to 10 holes in here. You just want the syrup to kind of be uh, immersed, I don't know if I'm using that word right, into the bake. Okay, so I'm just going to continue stabbing, <laughs> as you can see. Are you open for another question? Yes. Okay. Uh, Somebody wrote to us, uh, I am a teacher librarian working with immigrant high school students. What mm -hmm. advice would you give to young people who want to share their food culture but might be worried about how it will be received by others? Why, uh, what would you say to immigrant families and their American-born children who may be worried about their food becoming mainstream, leading to watering down their food culture? Yeah, and that's a big question. I know that that is <laughs> It's so hard even, you know, like making this cookbook and, and honestly making Filipino um, recipes on this kind of scale. I, I always think that it's, it was very intimidating to know, like, you know, everyone has their own version of what adobo is or what every single Filipino dish that your family kind of made growing up. And that's kind of like the standard to you. And I realized that, you know, the book that I made is not necessarily very traditional. It's meant to be Filipino American with a lot of Western American influences, uh, you know, combined into the book. And so I think that for my advice for you know, like young people, like wanting to make like the food of their culture for the first time, you know, like I think that it's important to get into the kitchen and just like do what, you know, like even if it's not perfect or it's not the same way that your parents did, it's still worth doing it. Um, and, you know, sometimes you have a different base of knowledge, right? Like maybe you grew up, you, once you finish school, you only learn how to make spaghetti the regular, regular Italian way. Um, but then you're like, okay, maybe I can now like implement like things like banana ketchup and red hot dogs and make it kind of more Filipino. I think everyone has their different barometers of like, okay, like the comfort zones and what they're able to do. But it's honestly most important to kind of just do it because I think that you can go on for so long without making anything of your culture. And then by the time, a blink of an eye that you know it, like, oh, I've you know lived years without having this dish or doing that. And it's also like preserving a lot of like your memories and your family's memories by like continuing to make recipes. And so like, I hope people still like, you know, go into the kitchen without like fear of judgment um, because we're all learning here. Um, so that is my biggest, I guess, advice is just like to do it, even if it's not this, like the expectations of it being as good as your parents or better than your parents. Like there's no such thing as, I think it's more so realistic to be like, okay, like, this is my own version and be okay with that and happy with that. So hopefully that was inspiring of some sort. Yeah, that was inspiring. Oh, thank you, Dick. Um, <laughs> I know we had a loaded question, but I am actually doing a bit of this new step, which is now that my muffins have all the holes poked into them, I'm going to take a pastry brush and then uh, dip the syrup in and kind of just like go very liberally soaking the muffins with the syrup and in theory you would have of course like the hot muffins coming out of the oven 
but you know, these are the pre-made versions that I did. So um, we're gonna go ahead and keep soaking the syrup. And uh, also after you're done soaking, these should be just like sitting into the pan, sitting in the pan for another 10 minutes for it to like, you know, fully soak up all that liquid. Um, and then you can kind of transfer it to a water cooling rack um, to be able to do the glaze portion. So there is the other last component of this recipe is the yakult or tangy glaze that you can use, you know, regular yogurt if you don't have yakult, but it is just what I have on the recipe itself. Okay. Okay. So, um, one another person asked, um, "Will you be having ensaymada recipes?" I didn't notice if there's an ensaymada recipe in the book. Yeah, there's actually. Uh, one ensaimata recipe uh, that is a three cheese ensaimata, so a little bit on the oh, same. Oh yeah. Sorry. No, you're fine. It's a what's it called? There's a uh, three different types of cheeses. Um, one of which is cotija, um, and the other one is the idam cheese, which is like the queso de bola that I remember growing up. Also, like every time around Christmas, right. lots of the big red like block of cheese um, with the wax and all that stuff. And then the top actually has like a whipped ricotta topping um, that is kind of like the frosting element of like a normal, like special ensaimada from like Red Ribbon or like Goldilocks. Okay. Alrighty. So ready. <laughs> these are pretty much like, I did a very quick version of soaking them and everything. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead to one of the last steps, which is making the glaze. Um, so let me grab this, let these continue soaking, but have space to actually mix uh, the stuff needed for a glaze. Okay. One moment. You gotta keep that frozen. You know, I'm like, yeah, sorry, that was just for show. That column C needs to be safe. <laughs> um, there was a time when there, um, we couldn't get any of those. Oh, and wow. so when I finally got it back in the bay, I just hoarded a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh, I I'm know. I'm sorry to all, everybody who's looking for it before. That was before the pandemic. I, I feel like it's so important because I actually that calamansi, at least the version that I bought from the store, it all comes in like smaller size packets. And so I know a lot of the times if I ever have like savory you know, like fish and need a dipping sauce. I usually do like soy sauce calamansi. Yeah. Um, and that's probably why they're like in those very small little packets. But for the bake, yep. I just cut and like emptied everything into that one jar. Yeah. But this is your cult. If you've never seen it before, um, it comes into like, this kind of like plastic package. But this is the Japanese probiotic drink. That is very nostalgic for me as a kid. I think that they reminded me a lot of, you know, like those Danimals uh yogurts that are also kind of like drinking forms kind of like this um but i actually have to first before i put the yakult into the glaze we have to sift this powdered sugar into this tiny bowl um so i'm gonna go ahead and do that i pre-measured it but i like definitely wanted to have it uh what's it called uh sifted in real time because you don't want lumps in your glaze gotta be smooth <laughs> yes it has to be smooth so as you can kind of see i'm gonna sorry for all this adjusting um we're kind of just making sure that i'm using a whisk honestly a spoon um i always sift my powdered sugar whenever you're making like an american buttercream or something or literally any time that it's used as kind of like a topping because there is a danger of all these like big giant lumps into your glaze that you definitely don't want. You want like a silky smooth glaze or frosting usually. Um, so this part, sorry for the tedium. I, I definitely could answer a question probably as I'm sifting. <laughs> Can I ask another question? Yeah, please, please. Uh, what skills did you learn on this journey to publish this cookbook? Oh my gosh, I feel like I learned so much of, um, I guess, time management, pro project management, <laughs> um, 
that I feel like this is my first book. Um, I've never written a book before. And I think that like, it's such a marathon that you're kind of running, if that's the best metaphor for it, is that like, I, I guess I spent the last three years on this book. But if I thought about like the, oh, I have to get like 275 pages done and all this stuff, like if I thought about it like that in a scary way, when I first started writing the book, I think being able to piece um, like kind of like compartmentalize each task of like, oh, I have to finish the um, the manuscript first draft by May, but then I have to do the proposal, you know, a few months earlier than that. I think just focusing on like one stage at a time really helped me feel like I could actually finish the book because uh, otherwise I thought it would be too daunting if I like really let myself get overwhelmed. And so, yeah, with any big thing, like you kind of learn so much about yourself of like what stresses you out and how to de-stress yourself. Um, when it's kind of a, a little stressful project, but I am very grateful for the book because it taught me so much of what I could do, even though I didn't know that at the time I was able to do it. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Yes. Do you have any observation on how does the American Filipino baking differ from, um, you know, traditional regular Filipino baking? Like, how does your baking differ from your mom's? Oh, yeah, I do feel like my mom, you know, like a lot of the times what I associate with like very traditional like Filipino desserts is it even baked. Usually it's usually like steamed rice cakes like we were talking about, like sapin sapin, puta bumbong, um, suman and things like that are so much of, you know, pre-colonial kind of, uh, you know, desserts and merienda snacks that we would have um, in the morning. And so my conception of like a, like dessert and you know having so much of like cakes and brownies and ice cream and and like all these things that like I think my parents you know they had some forms of that growing up um but not necessarily like um kind of infusing a two-way uh kind of what's the word uh different kinds of influences at the same time in their in their baking and um and cooking I'm, I'm also okay. measuring now one and a half tablespoons of Yakult uh, into the sifted powdered sugar. So I'm just whisking it. I'm going to change the perspective once again, once I can free my hands. Um, so here we have it. And so I'm just going to continue whisking. And then this will be, in theory, a beautiful white thick glaze. Okay, we're going. She is going. And so sometimes like the thing with glazes that you have to remember is that it's very flexible in case something happened, you know, maybe, oh, I added too much powdered sugar or I didn't add enough of the Yakult. That is very easily, uh, oh, 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 sorry, the timer is going off. And so the actual muffins are coming out of the oven. One second. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. Ooh. Okay. Uh, live removal of muffins from the oven coming right now. <laughs> One second. One, 1,000. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Okay. All right, we see that the ones that we were just doing are very big um, and they look really good. Beautiful. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to grab a toothpick. Ooh, okay, it's very close up. And so ideally, oh, well, I should actually put them in the oven longer. This is this is what you don't want, is all this like wet batter on this toothpick. Um, so always good to check. Uh, false alarm, we're putting it back for another like three minutes or so since that was like the 17 minute mark for 350 degrees. Period. So 17 minutes for um, in 350 degrees. Yeah, so that was the originally when we uh, first put in the oven, it was at 425 for seven minutes, then we adjusted the temperature to be lower. And so I kind of just let it into the oven. I'm going to put it in for another like three minutes and see how it goes in there. Um, but sorry, back to the glaze. Um, I'm going to actually, I don't know why this is. So this is very, very thick. Um, and if you want it to be a little thinner, that is totally fine. I actually, even I might like, put just a little tiny, tiny bit of your cult. Um, just because like, again, if you find it too loose, add more powdered sugar. If you find it too thick, add a little bit more your cult. So I think it's 
slightly thick for my taste, so I put just like a tiny splash of yogurt. Okay. So right. I read on in your book that uh, all this this uh, baking started what during the pandemic. But have you been thinking about baking even before that? Um, you know, yes, yeah. When I started baking, when I was a, a teenager and stuff, like I love to bake just for family gatherings, like for school things. Like I think it was definitely my stress relief. Um, and so I think that like during the pandemic, it was again I turned to it because there was nowhere else to go, nowhere else to be. And I think the the kitchen became like a refuge for a lot of people. Um, and so I'm really glad that like having that time, like even though it was a terrible time, you know, of, you know, the grand scheme of everything, it was still kind of like, you know, time to kind of reset and also find and, re and rediscover your, like, your passions that you had, um, you know, before the world started getting too, too busy and chaotic. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually, I'm going to do the last step, which is drizzle this uh, icing um, glaze over our muffins. So sometimes I like to use, like, if you're really trying to be fancy and, like, no kind of like our, uh, what's the word, have more precision with where you're placing the icing. Like I usually sometimes dump this into a Ziploc bag and cut off the tiny corner so you can kind of pipe it. Um, but we're just gonna like go ahead and go kind of freestyle with this. And I'm just gonna use like a spoon and kind of like just do a drizzle um, over each of the muffins. So I'm gonna like lower this since you couldn't really see it. Don't worry, there's more opportunities for glazing for these muffins. Um, so we're going to go ahead, oh gosh, this might be a glop of, oh, we got a glop of icing on that one, but that's fine. Again, they're going to taste great no matter what, so we're all good here. And we're going to go ahead and do that for all of the muffins. Don't worry, okay. And in theory, once they harden, I guess the glaze, you'll see um, it'll not be liquid anymore. It'll be good to eat. Um, but, you know, we could also cheat and I can also just eat a bite, even though they're not necessarily fully uh, done hiring. I'm so impatient. I think that's something that I had to learn to be better at from baking is that, you know, the best thing can't always be rushed, except for when we have like a Zoom call that's only like an hour long. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Let me Locking check again. I know. Let me check the oven. I'm too in the zone. Okay. I will check the oven just to make sure. But I'm sorry. I'm like... When I'm starting a task, sometimes it's so hard to like keep myself away from it when I know I could be done with it soon. Okay, give me a second. Okay. See what's happening with this. One minute. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Hope it's ready. <laughs> Time for to pick. Oh, so sorry, guys. It's it's okay. Sorry. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm coming back soon. Okay, the toothpick has come back clean. Not that you can really see this, but it is no longer with loose batter in it. So those are now done. I am going to turn off the oven. Uh, safety first, everybody. Make sure you turn off your ovens when everything is done. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much finishing the last of glazing this specific muffin, but I'm going to show you the final result in literally a minute or two. Let me see. Okay. All right. Okay. This is the best looking one, so I'm going to lift it up, but I will also just move this so you can kind of see. Oh my God. This is, oh, my bad. Okay. Yeah. So. We have here the finished muffin. There's the glaze on top. Um, ideally, that is what it should look like when you're done baking. So please let me know how it turned out for you. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm done now, but we can also have more time to talk too, which is really great. And <laughs> so if anybody ha else has a question, you can ask whatever you want now. Yeah, please. For, forever hold your peace. <laughs> I I do have a question here. I love how um uh, your mom, your in that in this uh one of the front pages, uh the the saying bahala ka sa, bahala ka sa buhay mo. 
And I'm like, that is so Filipino. <laughs> really? I like that. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to say that, probably say that to my daughters as well. But, it, you know. <laughs> oh, no, I know. I think it's sometimes a lot more like sarcastic when my yeah. mom is in a, in a more of like a stern way of like, okay, you need to, okay, you're doing what I'm in real life whatever when you're she's mad at me um but you know in theory it's it's basically like when you do kind of like get to have fun and let loose and do what you like with your life I think you start living more for it so I hope more people take it to heart in a sincere way (laughs) that's that's how I was raised like um they don't my mom never really said it unless she meant it so when she said bahala ka sa buhay mo or uh, how do you in, um translate that like uh whatever you want to do right yeah yeah do, yeah, <laughs> do, do whatever that. you want to do um is actually she's saying it straight but i guess because that she's a bit autistic too <laughs> mm, <laughs> mm. so somebody said that she or they will be a message to in insta is there a substitute for the little skeleton plan for your ube crinkle cookie recipe oh yeah i think i saw this same question yeah yeah i mean i think some people actually have like i know someone who kind of made them just regular size crinkle cookies um i think you can use also like a cake pan if you have like an eight inch or nine inch um round that also works um so like feel free to kind of like you, you don't necessarily have to have the cast iron skillet to make that recipe either all right perfect um if it they if some of the, uh the people don't have Instagram or Twitter, um, where or how could they reach you? Yeah, uh, you can actually reach me over email, uh, the dusky kitchen at gmail dot com. So like, feel free to reach out there. Um, I'm definitely like answering my own emails. So like, do not be afraid to kind of you know ask a question or even just like to talk. It's so nice sometimes to hear like what people thought of the book. If you you know don't necessarily have social media. I still, every single comment or every single like email that I've gotten has been really meaningful. So thank you so much for that too. If you, if you end up doing it, that'd be great. (laughs) So just to repeat the dusky kitchen at gmail.com. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. I just put that in the chat for uh, those people who've been asking. Mm. Um, When you were in the Philippines, did you ever try out the um, popular brands of desserts over there like did you did you try a buku pie oh my gosh yeah actually i did have like a buku pie when i went to um i'm gonna i went to the taal volcano before it erupted but like alongside i guess it's close enough where i think that um there was like really good buku pie and like roadside stalls and stuff uh, which i really liked um but yeah, I, it's funny because like there are Goldilocks and Red Ribbon Bakeries here in the States, but it was kind of like nice to kind of try what it what they are like also in the Philippines mm-hmm. um, to taste and compare and everything. Yeah, there's a um, there's a street in Laguna where mm-hmm. there's all the bake the buku pie baking bake shops are right across each other so ah. that you can buy from each and everyone and each and everyone has a different recipe. Oh my gosh, that's lovely. All right. Um, well, thank you so much, Abby, for the great conversation. And thank you, everyone who joined us tonight. Please check out San Mateo County Library's upcoming author talks at smcl.org slash author talks. We would also appreciate it if you could tell us how SMCL did with this program at smcl.org slash rate this event. And um, I wish you all good night. Oh, thank you so much. I hope you have great bakes and let me know how they turn out. Thank you. Bye.